Picking your lot for your new home comes with many options and a lot of terminology to know. The location that you pick for your home is so important to consider upfront because it's not something you can change later with a renovation. The choice of lot will determine what direction your backyard faces, if you back onto ponds, parks, or other homes, and even the distance between you and your neighbor. To help us wade through all of this information, we are joined by Darren Rose, an expert in his own right, having helped over 1,000 families into their new home. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about lots. One of the most important things when you're looking at a new home is the location you're going to put that home on. And there's so many things to look at when we talk about lots. What I'd like to start with is one of the terms you're going to hear quite often in our industry, which is a building pocket. Building pocket is a term used quite often in our industry. But what does that mean to you when you're choosing your lot? Well, building pocket defines the width of home that you can put onto a certain lot. So when you're looking at a 28 building pocket, what that means is the maximum width of a home you can have is 28 feet wide. Uh, building pocket typically will allow you four feet on either side of your home to your fence line. So a 36 foot wide lot will allow a 28 foot wide home. This will give you a minimum of eight feet between your neighbors. The thing with the building pocket is when you're looking at a 28 building pocket, it doesn't necessarily mean your home has to be 28 feet. So if you fall in love with a plan that's 24 feet or 26 feet, we can still help match you with a lot that's necessarily bigger if you like that lot. Building pocket's also gonna tell you which side your garage is gonna be on and your front door. So do you wanna face north or east or west or whichever direction makes the most sense to you, we'll look at that from your building pocket. It'll also give us an idea of your easements, your backyard, exactly how that house fits. Next, I wanna look at the community maps and show you what you're gonna see when you come into our show home when you're looking at the lots. So when we look at the community map, the first thing we wanna see is the direction. So this is showing us north, so we know that the top of the map is north, so you can see which way your lot is facing. Then the building pocket we were talking about, that's the numbers right in the center. So 26 building pocket, and this part's showing us which side the garage is going to be on versus the front door. Also, your legend is off to the side of the map, which is gonna tell you if you have an electrical transformer, which is the large blue box, a light, which is the yellow circle, if you have a street light out at front. The red is a fire hydrant. Now, fire hydrants are good for insurance, but they do limit your parking. And also where your mailbox is located. So it gives you just a quick overview of what a building pocket is on the overall map. So that's what you're gonna see on a community map when you're looking at building pockets. The next thing I'd like to discuss is the different types of lots that you'll see in every subdivision. Um, starting with your typical lot. Your typical lot is your, your basic everyday lot. So these are uh, mostly flat lots. When I say flat, they'll always have a slight slope for drainage, but some can have different grading. That's something that we would help you with, which will tell you what kind of slopes in your yard. Do you have a berm? I won't go into you know, depth into all that for you, but these are your regular lots. You'll either back onto a back lane, you'll back onto another home, be beside another neighbor. Um, beyond that, you start to look into walkout lots. Walkout lots are um, going into a hill. It's the easiest way to describe them. So the back wall of your basement, you'll be able to have doors and windows leading out to the backyard. Your main floor, you'll wanna have a deck because you're going to be anywhere from nine to 12 feet in the air. Uh, what's nice with a walkout is your basement no longer feels like a basement. It's very bright, very open. Majority of walkouts usually back out onto a pond, um, but we do see them onto parks, gardens, sometimes even onto roads. So they give you a lot of different variety when you're looking at a walkout. One of the things with walkout lots you always want to remember is very often you're going to need retaining wall. Retaining wall is typically done with concrete, but can be done with 
railroad ties or cinder block or different bricks if you want a little bit of a different look. But their whole purpose is to stop the dirt that's coming in from the sides from falling into the back of your home. So that's your purpose number one keep them level. The second purpose of a retaining wall is sometimes if your slope is quite drastic on the backyard where you don't find your yard that usable, you'll use retaining walls to tear your yard or to flatten it and to give you a more usable yard. Because on a walkout, you're going to come from the street and then you're going to drop along the side of your home on a very steep slope down to the back. Um, walkouts are quite popular with you know, when you want to develop basements, basement suites, or a lot of times we've had a lot of in-law suites where the parents are living down there or the children are living downstairs and they want a little more natural light and not to feel like they're in the basement. Um, next to that is you have two different types of lot backings, I'll call it. One is amenity. Amenity lots are lots that back onto a pond, a park, um, a play structure, something of value to the neighborhood. The one thing with amenity lots is typically you are going to have a chain link fence. Um, so your chain link fence is going to be a lot more open to the park, to visibility. So um, it has pros and cons to it. Um, some of the cons is a little less privacy, being a little more open. But one of the really nice effects of it is it does have a nice look and gives you that view of the lake or view of the park right from your backyard. But high visibility is also if you're onto a road, whether it be on the back or on the side. So it's very often you'll see corner lots uh, being in high visibility. So now the side of your home has a street coming along it, that's very visible. You're gonna need to add a roof line, some more trim to the windows, and again, make that side of the home as decorative as the front of the home. High visibility lots are desirable in the sense of when you're backing onto a road, you have a little more privacy, you don't have somebody behind you. When you're on a corner lot, you're allowed to have a lot more windows, a lot more natural light. So they've been a nice feature, but you do want to remember there is a little bit more cost again, because for the developer in the community to keep the beautiful look of the community, they will want more of those architectural elements to the side or rear of the home. So far, we've talked about building pockets and understanding how those work and how they fit your community. We've looked at the different types of lots that you can look at. Now we wanna go a little bit more into the actual lot itself. And we're gonna talk about the legal plot plan. Now, a legal plot plan is taking the building pocket to the next level. So once you've determined your lot and your home, we're gonna put it onto the lot plan itself. That plot plan is going to show you a bird's eye view of exactly how your home sits. It's going to give you an exact dimension to your backyard, your sides. It's going to show us the exact grading, any easements. It will also show you if you have transformers, fire hydrants, or anything on the lot. When you look at the lots, when you get into plot plans, there's basically, for simplicity, two different styles. There's your regular lot, which we had talked about with a four foot side yard on each side between you and your fence. Then there's also what's called a zero lot. Zero lots have gained a lot of popularity. What they've done is they've narrowed out your lot. So one side of your home will actually sit right on the property line and you will have five feet between you and the neighbor. So this is going to give you that easement on one side versus two. So you're going to share a lot line with your neighbor when you get into zero lots. The thing with zero lots is because they're a little bit smaller, they save cost and still giving you some separation. They do have limitations though in you can't have windows on the side of your homes now, but you can still have them on the front and back. So we always try to maximize the amount of uh, glass in the front and back of your home when we're placing you onto a zero lot line. But I'll show you on the plot plans themselves what that really looks like. So the first one, this is your regular lot. So you're gonna see your solid line, solid red line on the side is your actual property lines. Your dotted line is the maximum width the house can fit in. So that's gonna leave you a minimum of four feet on each side to your property line, which would be your fence line. So this will also show you the depth of your backyard, the length of your driveway, and also if you had any transformers or lights or anything, this home doesn't have any, just your CC valve, which is your water shutoff, but it does give you a legend to tell you what everything means around the map. It'll also tell you your grade and your slope, so you know how much yard slope you're gonna have to the backyard for drainage. 
Your next one is your zero lot line. Your zero lot line has your solid red line for your property line, but as you'll see, the house sits right on top of this property line and has a five foot side yard on this side. So you're gonna actually share that yard with your neighbor. Other than that, that's your only difference between your zero lot and your regular lot. You'll still see your depth of backyard, your length of driveway, and the same symbols on the front. And that gives you just a brief idea of what you're looking at when you see a plot plan. Now today, we were able to go through building pockets, the different types of lots, looking at plot plans and zero lot line lots. So I hope that gave you some valuable information you can take with you when choosing your next lot. What a great overview of lot terminology and style of lots that are available. For more details about lot options and communities in and around Edmonton that are available to build in, be sure to click the link in the description below to talk to our concierge and book an appointment. So if you're a house hunter looking for new construction, be sure to like and subscribe to be notified of all of our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Garen, or should she just, just cut it? Stop and not say well here. Like, should she just end it saying, Good. I mean, that's like, come over on this side. Come over here. <laughs> we'll be able to see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's like> a, <laughs> you want behind the scenes. Here's behind the scenes. <laughs> Parks or other homes, and even the distance between you and your neighbor. Oh, crap. <laughs> so close.